have vanquished Cameron Robinson from the stage and claimed it back for myself. Hey, folks, Chris Waters here, live from GameSpot's E3 stage show, and uh, it's Diablo 3 time. No, uh, correction, not simply Diablo 3. It's Diablo 3, Reaper of Souls, Ultimate Evil Edition, which I think, Josh, Johnny, that's how you have to say it, right, guys? I, I believe that's the correct way of saying it, yes. Awesome. Well, so. you guys are here from Blizzard to yeah. show off the PS4 version, the Ultimate Evil Edition, and uh, we've got it playing right now, so let's just hop right in there. And you guys tell us a little bit about what makes this so ultimate and evil. Well, first let's start off with, you know, when you get the Ultimate Evil Edition, you get all of Diablo 3, right? Yeah. So you get, you get the original game, you get all of all the great classes, Acts 1 through 4. But in addition to that, you get all the great content released with Reaper of Souls. So you get Act 5 with here you're seeing Sir Johnny play the beginning of Act 5. You get the new class, the Crusader. Uh -huh. um, you get Adventure Mode, and you get a slew of really cool console-specific features. So Very cool features. Yeah. I mean, you know, the console, I think that transition for Diablo with Diablo 3 has been so well received. So many people just sort of Really liking the dual stick feel, like feeling it's a natural fit for the action and the fluidity of play. Certainly in the GameSpot office, we've got a lot of fans. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, it's out on consoles already. What is, so you guys got to kick it up a little bit for the PS4 version though, right? Well, we did. I think there was some, some you know, some great challenges there. Um, but I think you, you mentioned how good it feels, right? And it's really important for us that from the beginning, it really felt like it was hand-built for the, for, the, for the console. And so one of the things we added is something we call action combat, right? So we, we took all the destruction bonuses, all the massacre bonuses you find on PC, and we really sort of umped them up a level and so now you can create these sort of cool combos to give you some really significant boosts uh -huh. to, to, to the experience. We also make sure we we use a trackpad and the DualShock 4 controller, and you know, so it really feels like this is one of the first big RPGs to hit the next gen of, of platforms. So super exciting. Yeah. Well, you mentioned the touchpad there. What am I doing with the touchpad? So you know, one of the things we did with the touchpad is again, we didn't want to come up with a gimmick, but this is a game where you're picking up a lot of loot and you go into your inventory, right? So yeah. you can use a trackpad to select items in your inventory and sort of move back and forth, and it's just a different way of getting to your items, but one that feels that makes great use of that of that feature on the dual shock cool. 4. Cool. Right on. Uh, sort of giving folks another option now. You mentioned sort of uh, amping it up here. Uh, tell, who is this sinister fellow with the, the so glowing she, parts? She is uh, she's the death maiden. So the story behind, you know, the old encounter in Act 5 is that Malthael, the angel of death, uh, wants to vanquish all life on the world of Sanctuary. And of course, it is your job as a player to say no and to stop like, that. Actually, I would prefer it if you did not. Asking politely, turns out it's not very effective against no, the Angel of Death. No, no, it doesn't, it doesn't work. <laughs> no, it doesn't work. He's a little stubborn. You know? you know, I was expecting you guys to get to Act 5. It just becomes dialogue trees, and you try to convince him, talk him out of it. But you want a different way. I think it was probably better. Yeah, so we just got to punch him in the face. <laughs> really <laughs> hard <laughs> with my souped-up punch attacks. Yeah. Uh, of course, you know, you see on screen, you've got the sort of different abilities mapped to the different buttons, and chaining these all together and sort of working them in, in a complementary fashion, so that you you have that play style. You've got you know you've got it all kitted out. So much of the, the Diablo appeal is experimenting with that, finding that niche, and then just making yourself better at it. Exactly right, and that's something that you know we really wanted to make sure, like on Reaper Souls and the Ultimate Evil Edition, that your items need to feel legendary, need to feel epic, and you're really going to change the way you play. You play the game. All right, well, you guys had a, a little shout out in the Sony press conference uh, on Monday, and it was revealed that enemies from The Last of Us are going to be making an appearance in the Ultimate Evil Edition. Uh, before we talk about the nitty gritty of those those nasty beasts, how did that how did that come about? How did how did it just, did you guys think like? You know what? We have a, an incredible menagerie of gross monsters, but One more. we need to get some more gross monsters. You know, great question. I think uh, you know Sony's been such a great partner. Uh, they have this, they have a love for their players that for us at Blizzard is really important. And then we were talking about how can we make the PS4 version feel sort of unique to PlayStation as well. And you know, we have good friends at Naughty Dog. We love The Last of Us. And for, you and you me know, both, buddy. Yeah, I mean, it just it just it just felt like such a great way to. You know, add a feature to Adventure Mode by adding a Last of Us sort of themed dungeon with the monsters, the lighting, and it's just a really sort of cool sort of way to tip our hat at a great game. <laughs> so that, so you know, 
you spend a lot of time in the world of Diablo, and then you had you guys added like a Pittsburgh level. It's just really run down. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, something like that. Something like that. Maybe not Pittsburgh, but like it it's definitely looks like it belongs in The Last of Us. In The Last of Us. All right, and it's not it's not just like one or two. You you guys have brought like a whole menagerie of clickers and totally like the whole the, I think the whole affected. menagerie. The whole yeah. family's there for you to kill and loot. So <laughs> to kill and loot. Yeah. And speaking of, uh, any Last of Us themed loot? I mean, can you pick up like? Ellie's switchblade, no. or like Joel's kind of ratty rifle. I don't know why you would want that. No, but the the other sort of cool feature we you know we're adding for PlayStation 4 is the one we announced yesterday, which is a Shadow of the Colossus transmog look for your character. No kidding. So you can you can look like one of the one of the giant creatures from from Shadow of the Colossus, which looks fantastic. Wow. Yeah. That sounds Very badass. Cool. All right. Well, Last of Us Shadow of the Colossus. What else you guys got up your sleeves here? We see like some some ratchet and clank, uh, you know, goofy weapons coming in there. Maybe we, some cr some uh, chains of the uh, what are Kratos's chains of prevention oh, or whatever. Yeah. The, <laughs> you know, no announcements at this moment, but you know, it's uh, we'll see. All right, all right. Uh, well, you know, I think with the transition to consoles, the it was came sort of the introduction of being able to play locally. On consoles, uh, talk a little bit about that about the the multiplayer options for Ultimate Evil Edition. Okay. Well, it's it's all the greatness that you know you had in the in the original console release, right? So you can play online, you can play offline, but I think the game really sinks when you're playing on the same couch, like Johnny and I. Except I'm not playing, which is kind of weird because my my fingers want to. Are do your something. fingers twitching there? Yeah, they're twitching. But you know, the team added some really great features when it comes to you know playing um, sort of on like playing together. Uh, one of them is uh, my favorite one is what we call nemesis kills. Uh -huh. So like right now, because Johnny's playing, if any of those monsters on screen were to kill him, that monster would level up and step through a portal, and then he would go infest any of your friends' games, uh, anybody in your friends list. So he dies in this game, and the yeah. next time I log on, I might be playing, the music gets dim, like a Jaws kind of soundtrack comes up, the portal <laughs> opens up, and his nemesis jumps through it and says, like, Johnny's killer, and then he's going to try to kill me. It's a really challenging fight. Now, if I kill him, we both get a cool reward. If I don't, he'll level up again. Yeah, what happens portal. if he starts cutting a swath through you and all your friends list? It, he will continue rampaging. <laughs> then uh, you're in trouble. Yeah, well, you, but or whoever kills them, like, gets people will get rewards. Benefit. Yeah, and, and, then, and then that sort of cascades down. Excellent. Well, we've got a question here from uh, one of our resident GameSpot, Diablo aficionados. Diablo aficionados, you guys have a term for that? For the Diablo fans? Players. Players. Could use a little work, but we'll allow it for now. Uh, <laughs> Eric wants to know, uh, any chance of cross saves from the PS3 version to the PS4 version. That is one of the big features that was important for us to add is being able to migrate your PS3 character, you know, your level level 60 Demon Hunter. You know, you'll be able to import them into the Ultimate Evil Edition and you'll be able to start playing sort of right, you know, from level 60, get them all the way to level 70. So it's really important for us to have that, that cross functionality. Excellent. Yeah. So. And of course, it's not just Diablo 3 that you've got here. It's also the Reaper of Souls expansion. Right. And so that's... That's kind of a, that's a lot of Diablo. That is, that is, that's why we call it Ultimate Evil, right? It's got all the Diablo. I don't know, man. I mean, what if you want to release an edition after this? Where do you go from Ultimate Evil? You guys have kind of tapped it out there. Let's get where Blizzard <laughs> will find a way. It's all right, yeah. Have you read our loot descriptions? Yeah. We got range. Yeah, we do. <laughs> All right, Diablo 3 Ultimate Evil Edition uh, coming to the PlayStation 4. Do you guys have this up and running here on the show floor at E3? We do. We do. Our friends at the Sony booth right across the way here. We can play it. So, you know, we have to play remote play. We have all the, all the goodness there. Have you been seeing some uh, – what's been the reaction from folks so far? Have they just been, like, very focused on trying to shred their way through and, and get some loot oh, even I, during I, their short time with it? I think it? people have been very, so very excited. First of all, it looks great. Like, Runs on it plays you know 1080p 60 frames per second and it mainly looks really sharp and again it's like the first sort of RPG to hit the next gen right so again it's some some players who may have heard of Diablo but never had a chance to play it are now gonna get a chance to find out what the loot's all about. Well, that not 
Not like now exactly, but when? When is this release date coming up? You know, that's cool. Usually at Blizzard, we say, well, well, we can't talk about that yet. You know, no, August 19th. August 19th. August 19th. A scant so. two months away, yep. if my month math is correct, yep. which I'm not sure it is. It's been a busy day. <laughs> All right, uh, Josh, Johnny, thank you guys so much for coming on, showing off Diablo 3 Ultimate Evil Edition for the PS4. Uh, hope have a good show. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Catch you guys later. Uh